All right, everybody. Uh, today I'll be talking about adversarial policy training against deep reinforcement learning. My name is Xin Yu. I am from Penn State University. This is a joint work with three awesome PhD students, Xian, Wenbo, and Weihua. They contribute this work equally. I'm sure you all know deep neural network has dominated many fields, such as computer vision, natural language processing, and even cybersecurity. Recently, we've seen the trend of integrating deep neural network into reinforcement learning. The reinforcement learning integrated with deep learning is called deep reinforcement learning. It demonstrates extraordinary performance in many decision-making tasks, such as robotic control, autonomous medical, and finance and business management. Going beyond of those real-world applications, deep reinforcement learning is also broadly used in games, such as Go, poker game, real-time strategy game, and even soccer games. Similar to adversarial attacks against deep neural network, deep reinforcement learning is also vulnerable to adversarial attacks. To attack a deep reinforcement learning network, attacker could simply add invisible noise to the background canvas and therefore fool the reinforcement agent accordingly. On the right-hand side is an example of a pawn game. In this game, there are two parties. One is controlled by a computer program. The other is controlled by a reinforcement learning agent. As we can see on the left, without the attack, the reinforcement learning demonstrates decisive win over the computer program. However, after introducing invisible noise into the canvas background on the right, the reinforcement learning agent no longer demonstrates the same capability in this game. While this attack is considered very successful in terms of a failing reinforcement learning agent, the manipulation of a canvas background is actually not physical realistic. Because when playing this game, the gamer usually has no privilege to manipulate the canvas freely. So in this talk, I will introduce a new physical realist attack against reinforcement learning. Different from the attack which I showed you earlier, this attack do not require the gamer to change the canvas. Instead, we will train an adversarial agent in a multi-agent environment, and then use that adversarial agent to trigger the weakness of the victim agent, and thus trick the victim agent to act wearily. At the end of this talk, I will show you a demo video explaining what do I mean by an agent act weirdly. This is a roadmap of this talk. First of all, I will talk about the background of reinforcement learning, then I will talk about existing physical realist attack. Following that, I will talk about our method and evaluation, and finally, I will conclude this work. For those who are not familiar with reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning contains two components an agent and an environment. The agent observes the environment and takes corresponding actions, whereas the environment receives the agent's action and transit its current state to the next state. At the same time, the environment will release the reward to award the agent accordingly. The goal of reinforcement learning algorithm is to learn an optimal policy. Using that optimal policy, the agent should be able to receive the maximum amount of reward over the time from the environment. In deep reinforcement learning, an agent policy is usually modeled as a deep neural network. This deep neural network is also called policy network. The policy network takes as input the observation of the environment and output the corresponding actions. Over the past years, to learn a policy network, there are many learning methods. Among those methods, policy grading approach is the most commonly used. To use policy grading method, we need to first use another network to approximate a value function. 
The value function in reinforcement learning takes the responsibility of forecasting the expected total reward that the learning agent could receive at each time step. Using the value function, we can update the policy network by maximizing the value function, and then vice versa, we can use the policy network to help update the value function accordingly. In the learning process, we repeat the value function and the policy network update procedure iteratively until we observe the policy grading method reach the convergence. In the past, there is only one work that successfully demonstrates the effectiveness of a physical realist attack. The work is proposed in 2020 by a group of researchers from UC Berkeley. In that work, the researcher treats the victim agent as part of the environment. Then they train an adversarial agent to collect the maximum reward from the environment where the victim agent is located. In UC Berkeley's work, the researcher demonstrated the effectiveness of their adversarial agent in many multi-party games. However, they cannot always demonstrate the efficacy of this attack against multi-party games. Because the method they follow use the loss function of an existing reinforcement learning algorithm called PPO. The loss function in PPO provides less guidance when learning an adversarial agent to discover the weakness of the victim. So in this work, we propose a new approach to solve this problem. To be more specifically, similar to the UC Berkeley approach, we also maximize the reward of our agent. But differently, we let our adversarial agent take an action that deviates the victim's next action. The rationale of this approach is as follows. The adversarial is part of the environment. As I mentioned earlier, victim agent is under the control of a deep neural network. The neural network takes as input the observation against the environment and output action accordingly. In the environment, adversarial agent is part of it. As a result, the adversarial agent could take aggressive motion and force the victim agent neural network to output suboptimal action. Here we take this pawn game below as an example. The purple paddle is under the control of a deep neural network. This network takes as the input the environment which contains the blue paddle. To launch an attack against the purple paddle, attacker could train an adversarial agent to control the blue paddle. The blue paddle could move aggressively and trick the purple paddle stay still while the orange ball is moving towards the purple paddle. Using this approach, we can imagine the purple paddle could perform badly. However, we can also imagine the blue paddle may not perform well either. While taking aggressive motion, the blue paddle focuses on failing the purple paddle. When the orange ball is moving towards to the blue paddle, it may not take the necessary action and hit the ball accordingly. To solve this problem in this work, we do not vary adversarial motions too aggressively. Instead, we vary the adversarial motion only at the time when adversarial motion could influence the victim agent the most. To do that, we use exponential AI technique to identify the time most critical for influence the victim. As I mentioned earlier, the motion of the blue paddle is part of the network input. Using explainable AI approach, we can find the corresponding critical time step. Again, let's take the example of the pump game. The input feature dimension five to eight indicate the motion of the blue pedal. Using explainable AI, we can obtain a heat map. This heat map indicates the importance of this important feature dimension across time. Using this idea, we revise our loss function. We revise the loss function of an existing reinforcement learning algorithm. To be specific, we introduce the following loss term into the PPO loss functions. As we can see, the new loss term contains three components. First is the deviation of the action. By maximizing this term, we can deviate the action of the victim 
as much as possible. The second component is the deviation of the observation of the victim agent. By minimizing this term, we can reduce the motion of the adversarial as much as possible. Last but not least in this term, this term indicates the importance of each time step as to the impact of the adversarial motion. In this work, we use two games to evaluate our work. In this two game, we use a regular reinforcement learning agent to control one player and use our adversarial learning approach to learn the other agent. To understand whether our adversarial attack is effective, we measure the winning rate of our adversarial agent against the regular agent and also compare our winning rate with the adversarial agent learned by using UC Berkeley approach. Here is our evaluation results. As we can see, the x-axis is the time step we experience while training the reinforcement learning agent. Y-axis is the winning rate of the agent. The blue line indicates the winning rate of the baseline approach, whereas the red and the brown line indicate the winning rate of our approach. It should be noted, the difference between the red and the brown line is while we are training our agent, we use two kinds of explainable AI techniques. The right line indicates our method using white box explainable AI approach, whereas the brown line indicates our methods using black box explainable AI approach. As we can observe, overall, our approach demonstrates 10 to 10% 10 of increase in winning rate in compare with the baseline. And regardless of what particular explainable AI approach we are using, the performance of our method does not change much. Before I conclude this work, here is a demo showing you the power of this attack. As we can see in this game, we have two agents, red and blue. The goal of the blue is to bypass the right line behind of the right agent, whereas the goal of the right agent is to block the path of the blue agent. In this game, the blue agent obtained reward if it successful bypass the right line without falling down. Otherwise, the right agent will receive a word accordingly. In this game, the blue agent is training by using a reinforcement learning algorithm, and the right agent is trained by using our adversarial approach. As we can see, when the game starts, the right agent does not actively block the blue agent. Rather, it just falls down which trick the blue agent to behave weirdly, or in other words, falling down without running forward and bypassing the right line accordingly. Okay, to conclude this work, as I show you, reinforcement learning agents suffer from physical realist attack. Using exponential AI, we can escalate the exponability of an adversarial agent. Because physically realist attack is new, therefore we believe there is a strong need to develop a defense in the future. And that's all for my talk. And thank you very much. I am ready to take questions.